Hi guys, I'm Woodcraft Hamster and welcome back to my beginner's guide to wood carving. Now I wanted to talk to you today about just sort of, I don't know how to put this really, some other tools. Um, you know, tools not traditionally associated with wood carving, um, certainly not kind of what you'll see around in kind of, you know, the mainstay of media and that kind of thing. Um, and really these are just other things that I've picked up over time or have found particularly useful, most of which can be picked up easily and cheaply and they're just really there to sort of help you along and sort of enhance your wood carving process. Um, so to start off with, uh, where shall I start? I'll tell you what, let's have a look at one of these. So this is known as a draw knife. Some of you may already be familiar. Essentially it's a long blade with two handles um, and it's designed to be used with a pull cut. Um, so the idea is this is a nice sort of a traditional one, antique if you like, um, and it has got a beveled blade on the front here and it's got a flat edge on the back. Um, or on the back here should I say. Um, and basically what these are used for uh, is for either thinning down or removing amounts of material. Very popular with wood carvers. Um, people used to use them uh, traditionally for kind of making staves and, and spokes and those kind of things. Um, and in combination with some kind of holding device, now whether that's a vice, um, whether that is a clamp of some description, whether it's just you kind of putting pressure down on something, holding it in place. Um, you know, things like um, shave horses, which I'd love to show you, but I've never owned one. Um, I really don't have the space, but I would like to get one in the future. Um, and it's a device that you kind of sit on. It's almost like a bench with a clamp that's operated by your foot. And the idea being is you'd have a piece of wood facing you, you'd clamp it down by pushing your foot outwards, and you'd pull this towards you, and it would take off shavings. You can angle this sort of upwards or downwards for lighter or heavier cuts um, and it lets you put a lot of power in and because most of them will have handles that are kind of about this width apart they generally will stop if they hit your body making this quite a safe piece of equipment to use because if you do slip with it the handles will you, you, you might give yourself a little bruise but the handles will hit you and I know that if I'm using this in the correct manner there is no way I can cut myself with it so these are great little tools you can pick these up from flea markets, car boot sales, online auction sites. This one I think cost me about 10 or 15 pound. It wasn't in the best of condition, but I cleaned it up, got the rust off, sharpened the blade, put the handles on myself. This is actually one of my very first YouTube videos was making the handles for this. Um, now, in, it wouldn't be one of my one of these episodes if I didn't talk about Mora. Um, this is a Mora push knife. Um, you can use it in exactly the same manner, you can push, pull towards yourself or you can turn it the other way around and push away from yourself which makes it that little bit safer, very good for kids. I mean these are actually designed as a splitting tool, the idea is, is you put this on top of a round of wood, uh, haven't got one handy, but let's say this, and you put it on top here and you'd hammer it with a, uh, a wooden mallet and then you'd give it a twist um, and it would split it in half. That's, the, that's its intended use. I um, not, not knowing any better actually, uh, when I first bought this I thought this was a draw knife and I, I've owned this many years, um, but that's what I use it for and they're really really useful, I think these are about £20, so again on the relatively budget scale of things these are quite useful, they come shaving sharp out of the box, so really really useful. Um, moving on, what else have we got? Um, just an example of something really, this is a brace, um, forms part of a brace and bit, you're probably all familiar with these, you've got a, you basically have a, a, a drill bit goes into the end or an auger and you can make holes in things. Um, I like this one because it's quite traditional, um, I often use an electric drill, I've got a pillar drill here in my workshop that you will have seen before, um, and it, I, you know, personally I don't really care what you use, if you've got a battery drill, if you've got an electric drill, if you've got a pillar drill, or if you're using a brace and bit, or, or an old fashioned sort of carpenter's brace, looks a bit like an old fashioned egg whisk, um, you know, as long as it gives you the ability to bore a hole in something that's either going to be the hole that you want or it makes a small hole that you can then enlarge with another tool, they're really, really useful. Um, moving on, I've actually picked up the wrong thing first. 
Um, you will have seen this possibly in a couple of my other videos. This is a surform, um, and someone recently described it to me as a cheese grater for wood. Um, and I suppose really, in essence, that's what it is. The idea being, is you, you know, because it's got two nice handles, you get a really good grip on it, and you can literally rasp away at your wood um, and this is more for shaping, um, you know, if you're trying to remove lots of material, I wouldn't use one of these, but if you're most of the way there and you want to sort of shape a nice curve or even a flat section, you know, these are really, really good. Along the same sort of lines, I've got two things here that you'll probably be familiar with. This is a rasp, it's a particularly small one, but it's a rasp nonetheless. It has a flat side and it has a, you can just about see, a rounded side on there. And again, it's used for the same thing. You're literally just scraping away and shaping the wood. Um, now rasps do leave a lot of tool marks and I often progress over to a file once I've done uh, the most of the heavy work with a rasp or a surf form and it just cleans it up a little bit ready for either scraping or sanding or something like that. Um, now two other very quick things I wanted to show you. One is a steel rule. I find these really useful. They're great for marking out. They're great if you need to score a straight line on something. And unlike plastic, and you can use plastic rules, um, but these tend not to get damaged as easily or as quickly, which is really useful. Um, and last but not least, I might do a separate episode on this. This is, what is this? This is my, um, my do you know what? I've had an absolute blank. Um, this is my strop, what am I talking about? This is my leather strop. Essentially it's a flat piece of wood with a piece of leather over the top of it. And in, con in conjunction with a little bit of honing compound, I use uh, something called Starkey Blue or Smurf Poo, but you can use Jewelers Rouge or whatever you can get out of. Auto Sol works really well. When you're using bladed tools for carving, they get dull after a while and you have to maintain them. You often don't need to have a sharpening stone, uh, although you can do and it, it, it can help sometimes. But for me, a strop, every time I've finished using a tool, unless it's been a particularly heavy carving session, I will strop it with a little bit of stropping compound and that's normally enough to bring the edge back to full sharpness and if you do that regularly you will really help to maintain your tools sometimes you'll use them more more than others and sometimes you might need a sharpening stone um, let's have a look I've got one here um, this is an old oil stone um, a case that I made for it years ago um, now I tend to use water stones because I prefer them um, but you know, it's a stone that will help you hone and refine the edge and bring it back to full sharpness. But those are really just a few of the extra tools. You know, you don't need these, but these are sort of relatively inexpensive, cheap things that you can pick up to, that will help you along with your carving. Um, so I hope that was useful, guys. Please do leave any comments or questions in the box below. Hit like and subscribe if you'd like to see more, and I hope you'll all join me next time. Cheers, guys.